stations that stream us you'll be able to find us at talkstreamlive.com if you want the full five hours condensed to three hours you can go to soundcloud.com slash ground zero media that's soundcloud.com slash ground zero media tonight's show is uh is, is a show that's going to be very informative for you uh for those of you especially who know what today is uh today of course is 420 day and uh uh, even though um, today is the day where most people, you know, talk about uh, you know smoking pot or going to parties and smoking pot or at 420 lighting up a joint or whatever, there is a serious side, a very serious side to marijuana. And you know that uh, we've talked about it in a serious way. And we know that, uh, you know, a lot of people see it for what it is. It's a, it's a party drug or it's a... Uh, you know, it's a drug that, that people use to get high, but there are a lot of other benefits to it. And that's the, that's the very tricky part here. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do the show tonight because, you know, even though uh, people are out there, you know, partying, they're, 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 you know, they're smoking, some people smoke pot for partying. There are people out there that use, um, marijuana for medicinal reasons. And, uh, of course, for recreational reasons as well. And they're very, um, responsible. And, you know, since Donald Trump's become president, people are questioning the fate of legal cannabis. Um, and, and that is, you know, whether or not they're going to crack down on, uh, whether the feds are going to crack down on the use of marijuana. We have states that have made it legal. Uh, but there's another threat to marijuana, especially to growers and consumers. And that, of course, is a, a conspiracy to create big cannabis or big marijuana. That is marijuana that will be hijacked by big pharma. And it's hard to have a discussion about marijuana policies and and not head towards the idea, well, you know, this is all going to lead to something. Well, what's that? Big marijuana. It's going to lead to big pharma's tentacles in big marijuana. And that takes the fun out of any 420 celebration. It's a buzzkill. But it most certainly needs to be discussed, and I think it's important to be discussed because the reason is simple. Anything big pharma touches becomes a, a for-profit pile of crap and, uh, you know, where the cannabis industry could fall under the control of a few macro corporations, I mean, this would create a substantial, uh, well, it would co it'd cost a substantial cost to be, uh, you know, social cost to be through the roof. It would also be hiding critical information from the public if they decide to put additives and they manufacture or manipulate the marijuana. Uh, there are several reasons to hate Big Pharma uh, and a lot of the maneuvers they're planning on because we have seen what Big Tobacco has done to consumers in the 20th century. And so if we see Big Pharma move into this realm, I'm sure that we're all going to be, you know, it is worrisome as to what the future holds for marijuana. It's now a Schedule One drug, which uh, they say it's dangerous, but it's not dangerous. We don't know why they made it Schedule One, but I have an idea as to why, because many of you don't know, many of you do know that when we did a show about Monsanto a while back, I was talking about how there was a merger going to be happening between Monsanto and Bayer, uh, Bear Aspirin, uh, uh, originally IG Farben. Monsanto now appears to be developing genetically modified GMO forms of cannabis, although they'll tell you that they're not. The reason why they'll tell you that they're not is because they don't have their plants here in the United States. They are working on them in Uruguay right now. And so, like, you know, GMO seeds patented uh, for the market, just as they did with GMO corn and GMO soybeans, uh, we'd be looking at a plant that would need to be legalized, but still tight, uh, tightly uh, looked at enough and controlled that it could be captured by big corporate interests. 
Then competition would be suppressed by limiting access to homegrown marijuana, bringing production, sale, and use within monitored and regulated industry guidelines. And then, of course, you know, there'd be a legislating of a definition of industrial hemp as a plant having such low psychoactivity that only GMO versions qualify. So it's very manipulative. Uh, those are the sorts of conditions that critics have found buried in the fine print of the latest initiatives for cannabis legalization. And, you know, patients who use cannabis in large quantities to heal serious diseases find that natural plant growth organically in sunlight is far more effective than hothouse plants or pharmaceutical cannabis derivatives. So I know that, you know, if I say Monsanto is coming up with these uh, new strains, this strain of frankenweed, I call it, um, you can do some research and find that, yes, there, there are, uh, there are uh, experiments going on right now that uh, most certainly uh, have uh, shown that they're planning on merge. The reason why Bayer wants to merge with Monsanto is because they want to create their plants division, where they'll be having plants that they have genetically modified, and, uh, and then they want to put them on the market. So tonight, I have called upon the expertise of Daniel Lewis Crumpton, who is, uh, he's got a fine website called uh, Canisense, uh, Medical Marijuana. Uh, it's, it's total wellness uh, for the sake of this uh, idea of, of putting it out there, making it legal for everyone. It's, it's tested and, and refined uh, and uh, and definitely legal. I want to have him talk about it, but uh, Daniel Lewis Crumpton, welcome to Ground Zero. Clyde Lewis, man, you got the best strange sound effects in all of radio, man. I feel like I'm at a Hootie and the Blowfish concert. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't do pyro, though. I'd love to do pyro. I think that's <laughs> next on my list. You know. yeah, quick quick correction, though. No, my website's downloadedcontent.com. Okay. And, uh, and uh, I'm a caregiver with uh, with a program called Canisense. It's, right. uh that's a relatively new uh, cannabis collective that that came out around 20 months ago, and uh, this is this is something for me. I'm not speaking as a lawyer or doctor or anything like that. I'm speaking as somebody who is in need of medical cannabis. Uh, I openly talk about being a recovered alcoholic and uh, somebody who has suffered from post traumatic stress disorder. I uh, also kicked a uh, a, a painkiller addiction uh, for several years by the use of cannabis. And people like me and people like the caller uh, who was on, on the air before I came on, um, we don't have time for state legislatures to make medical cannabis accessible to us. We don't have time for uh, all of these politicians to, to get on board. So um, I was approached by uh, some guys from Canisense to be sponsored into the program. And these guys, um, you, uh, they're Ron Paul guys. Liberty guys. These are people who have been in uh, cannabis activism for 30 plus years and they put their heads together uh, and they basically what they've done for people like your last caller and people all across this country who need medical cannabis is uh, they've created a legal framework that's been streamlined over 13 years to allow anyone in any of the 50 states to obtain a medical cannabis uh, card that is uh, legal and has to be recognized by all the other 50 states uh, through uh, what's called telemedicine. Uh, essentially, the framework works like this. Um, you have Article 4 of the Constitution, which uh, basically, um, you know, it says you have to have full faith and credit should be given in each state to the public. Act. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm yeah, listening. Each each state has to give full faith and credit to the judicial proceedings of other states. So um, basically, it doesn't matter if you I reside in the state of Georgia. They're not very cannabis friendly. So, But Georgia, uh, if I become a California cannabis, a medical cannabis patient, has to respect and observe uh, that that's my status. So the, uh, the linchpin in this is how do I, somebody in Georgia, become a California patient? I don't really want to drive there. Don't really want to fly there. It's not very convenient for me. So uh, we had to wait a while until um, you know Obamacare came out under the Affordable Health Care Act, and you can think of it what you will. But I, I'm the type of guy that works with what I can, what, what I can, right? Mm -hmm. um, it it gave us a wonderful provision of telemedicine, which is uh, you're a, you are able to see a doctor in California from the comfort and convenience of your own home through the internet to get a medical cannabis recommendation. So uh, it doesn't matter where you're at in the United States, you can through the Canisense program. Uh, and as a caregiver, I actually walk people through this. Uh, it's very, very simple. Um, basically, you schedule your appointment through a company called Presto Doctor. 
that works with Canisense. Um, they, they take appointments seven days a week uh, around the clock, as far as I know. Um, you speak with your doctor. There's a short questionnaire. Tell them what you're seeking um, medical cannabis for. Is it you know, anything from migraine headaches to insomnia, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, things like cancer? Do you have a child with autism? You, know, just, you, you fill out the questionnaire why you're seeking it. Uh, whenever you, know, you set the time for your appointment when the appointment comes you talk to your doctor through anything that's skype capable it's not skype but it's you know if you have a phone or a tablet or a desktop it's got a camera and a mic you see your doctor you talk to your doctor uh he'll go over you know a treatment plan for you uh as soon as you get off with your doctor and when you're approved uh you'll get a medical uh card in your email that you can use right away you also get your recommendation, your treatment plan, and your email. Uh, the next business day, you actually get your hard copies in the mail, and you can use those right away. So uh, if, if people are interested in the information or to be sponsored into the program, you can go to downloadedcontent.com. Click on the Canisense Total Wellness tab up at the top. Uh, I actually put together uh, a short tutorial video that walks you through the process uh, on how you can do it yourself. And uh, there's an article underneath there that, that talks about my experience with Canisense too. Um, so in, in less than one week, Clyde, uh, I was able to schedule my appointment, talk to my doctor, get my medical card, uh, and then ha- uh, have access to the Canisense's apothecary. Now, this is where it gets really, really cool. Okay, why don't we talk uh, about why don't we talk about the apothecary, which is uh, the next phase? Which is this is a fascinating thing because this is a way legally you can get marijuana, even in states that aren't marijuana friendly. Triple eight six seven three thirty seven hundred. Back with more ground zero. Don't go away. I'm Clyde Lewis. You're listening to Ground Zero. Did I love bringing people into your world? who I think are remarkable. Daniel Lewis Crumpton is one of those people. He is an author, he's a writer, a podcaster, activist. His novel, Then Came the Flood, published in 2012, is an epic exploration of the events recorded most notably by books of Enoch in Genesis, as well as several texts from the New Testament and scriptures from every corner of the world, all of which highly suggest that our history on Earth most certainly had an intervention from otherworldly entities, both extraterrestrial and interdimensional, and the agenda of the Watchers to hybridize mankind may not be over. But tonight, we're here to talk about another project that Daniel Lewis Crumpton is a part of. He is currently putting his efforts as a caregiver behind the Canisense Total Wellness Campaign by introducing and sponsoring those in need in order to get critical information. Canisense is a medical cannabis collective that allows patients in all 50 states access to medical cannabis through a streamlined legal framework that is over 13 years in the making and offers members several legal safeguards to safely use their medicine regardless of what state they live in. It's uh, downloadedcontent.com. Uh, Just click on the Canisense uh, link. And it's so, so amazing to have Daniel on the program to tell us about this. Now, you were talking about, we talked about how they can get the card, they can talk to a doctor. Now, what is the apothecary? How does that work? The apothecary is, uh, it's not a dispensary because Canisense is a nonprofit. So the apothecary is where once you become a member, you actually can go in and you can purchase your medicine in any form, you know, that is going to be beneficial to you. Uh, you can get it in the actual flowers, the sativa, the indica, or hybrids uh, for people who like to smoke it. Um, if, if that's not your forte, if that's not the way you like to take your medicine, um, you know, like I have a mom, she's got end stage COPD. So uh, she actually takes the uh, cannabis capsules. Uh, those last like 48 hours. They're, you know, it doesn't. It, it's a full body, a full body high, like you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Alleviates pain, anxiety, you know, uh, things like that. Um, if people, you know, like the edibles, candy bars, uh, gummy gummy bears, gummy worms, brownies, however you like to take it. There's also a wide variety of the CBD oils uh, for people who like to vape. You can basically, it's it's an endless variety of how you can take your medicine in the apothecary. And what's great about it, Clyde, is when you order it, uh, all of this is is very uh, discreet. You're covered under HIPAA after you talk to your doctor. They ship it directly to your house in a discreet package straight to your door. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to interact with elements in your community that, you know, street, uh, street pharmacists that are probably pushing other stuff too. Um, this is a way to get clean, non-GMO cannabis shipped straight to you uh, it's it, it's like I said, it's a miracle. 
and it's helping hundreds of people. So the apothecary, once you once you actually go to Canisense, you can browse what they have to offer. And um, when you get when you become a member, um, that's opened up to you. Um, so, how does one become a member? It's real easy. First, you have to uh, you have to schedule your appointment with Presto Daughter to get a, a medical cannabis recommendation. When you get that recommendation uh, in your email, you want to go to the Canisense site, uh, and you want uh, there's a sponsorship form. All the links are on downloadedcontent.com or at Canisense. You fill out your information, and then you upload a picture ID so they know who you are. And uh, your doctor's recommendation um, to be to be just a patient, it's it, there is no cost. Uh, but if you become a full member, which is once I heard about the program, uh, once I saw the results of the program, I went ahead and just did the full membership. You know, uh, I'm just that type of a guy. If I see something that's working, I'm very proactive that way. The full membership is uh, 420 bucks. Uh, once you're in it, there's a lot of perks. Uh, one of the perks is you get $300 worth of medicine right away. You never have to renew your, your recommendation. Uh, and you also get referrals if you bring other people in need in. So there's a lot of incentives for becoming a full member. Um, but it's really that easy. I mean, it took me less than a week to get my doctor's recommendation, recommendation uh, upload that to the Canisense site um, with my sponsor's name, uh, choose my welcome kit. And that was it. That, you know, would, that it took, would save a lot of money on, on uh, you know, uh, taking opioids or some other pain medicine uh, at first, because I know that uh, some of my medications that I have to purchase put me well over, you know, anywhere between two and three hundred dollars a month, uh, which is a lot of money for me because, I mean, I still have other bills for my medical uh, my medical situation as well. So, uh, you know, I would say that, you know, getting into a program like this, you say you get at least three hundred dollars worth of uh, medicine in the beginning anyway. Uh, and then the renewal, what, once a year? Is that how it happens or what? Well, if you become a full member, no, there's no renewal. That's lifetime. Oh, wow. OK. So you're in for life and you get massive discounts on your medicine when you become a full member, too. And what's great is when you tell somebody else in need, you know, if you don't need medical cannabis, OK, but you do know somebody who does. You know, somebody fighting cancer. Right. You know, somebody with PTSD. When you bring them into the collective, you get uh, you know, you'll get in uh, commissions so that you could put that towards your medicine. Oh, wow. You know, so, so it's just a win win group because that way. Yeah, and it is legal, right? You're telling me that because of uh, what act, uh, what loophole in the law are you using quickly? Any idea? Well, Canisense is using a, a series of laws that already exist. Uh, the Compassionate Use Act of 1996, the Article 4 of the Constitution, and telemedicine. Uh, but there, it, it goes way deeper than that. Okay. Um, I, there's no time here to, to go through well, it, but let, here's what's really – let's, let's, let's go through some of it. We're going to take a break. Let's go through some of it on the break because this is fascinating. I've never heard about this before. And, and, you know, and I want to get to the GMO marijuana too and talk about that coming up. But I really, really am interested in all of this because this is uh, a lot of people have been calling tonight, wondering how they can get help, wondering what can happen in their not so friendly marijuana state. So uh, we'll be back with more. Triple eight six seven three thirty seven hundred hundred. Uh, Daniel Lewis Crumpton here tonight on Ground Zero. Can a sense? Uh, we'll be right back. You want to get hot? No. I'm Clyde Lewis. To ground zero. The numbers to call tonight, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. Tonight, Daniel Lewis Crumpton's with us on 420. A day of celebration for some. Tonight, a day of information for all of us. For those of us that need a little help in the pain department and uh, also want to know what the future holds for uh, the laws, marijuana laws, recreational marijuana laws, and, of course, uh, uh, Daniel's been talking about Canisense, and it's uh, a very uh, good program. Um, and uh, he was talking about doctors, legality, uh, the apothecary, the costs. And you were going to get into something else. You're talking about some of the products that that, that were that was going to be that, that are offered. Is that what you're going to talk about next? Well, one of the things that I did really want to stress, uh, uh, I do a weekly thing with Chuck O'Chelly, the O'Chelly Effect on American Freedom Radio, and a lot of the concerns that have come up is the legalities to it. Something I really want to uh, stress to people, when you do become a member of the Canisense Collective, you actually uh, – 
come into a legal defense team with you. Uh, Canisense is – they stand behind the legal framework of which Canisense is built that if you're – if the state ever moves against any of the members in any way or harasses them, you have a legal defense team that is paid for that will exonerate you. And if it ever goes to a jury trial, uh, they'll exonerate you there and set precedent in your state. Now, since the company's been out, no one has had any trouble whatsoever. And uh, that's something that I want everybody out there to know about is that this comes with several legal safeguards. Um, so, you know, that that's an extra bonus for it. You know, as somebody, myself, I have to report to the state every month, and this was something that, that was very concerning to me, is how is this really going to fly? So I personally have tested this legal framework and being a member of this cannabis collective myself with uh, agents of the state of Georgia who are not friendly to cannabis, and I had no problem whatsoever. So... That's great, uh, and and I'm sure this is very valuable for those who want to uh, are seriously thinking about uh, moving forward. And of course, as I said in the beginning of the program, it seems that uh, you know with everything that's being talked about right now, from you know how uh, Sean Spicer had to go back on what he said about uh, medical marijuana and the fact that the president during the campaign said something that he wanted to keep medical marijuana uh, as a, as a possibility. It seems to me that the whole debate on medical marijuana whether or not it should be legalized, uh, the, the, the legalization process or the idea of uh, getting legal uh, medical marijuana has won and it's winning. Uh, it's, it's winding down now to where at least the states will legalize medical or medicinal marijuana. Uh, but the problem here is that we still have that schedule one, uh, you know, problem that's hanging over it. And the thing that worries me is that, you know, bare AG or Bear Aspirin Company and Monsanto have decided to merge. And by 2018, they're going to be merging together. And I do know, even though Monsanto says, uh, no, that's not true, but it is, that there, there are right now experimenting with GMO marijuana in Uruguay right now. And that uh, and since it's legal to grow and to distribute marijuana in Uruguay, um, they, they are uh, they're basically... Uh, they want to they want to get it off schedule one. They want to legalize it, and then they want to bring it into production. But the problem we're looking at here with Monsanto and Bayer is monopoly. You know, they're worried that uh, there's going to be some monopoly problems, and that uh, there are all sorts of conditions uh, that you look in the fine print and you're saying uh, that patients who use the cannabis, uh, who, who who use it in large quantities to heal serious diseases. Uh, and, and they find that natural plant growth is better than uh, this, this corporate plant growth, they're going to be out because, you know, it, it, hothouse plants uh, for pharmaceutical cannabis derivatives, uh, they say they're not as, not as effective as those that are, are naturally grown in sunlight or organically grown in sunlight. So what do you have to say to that? I mean, is, is that true that, uh, you know, that even though hothouse plants may work, it's the sunlight organic growing that, that makes it work better? Well, I think that's kind of, I mean, for one thing, you know, when I'm a spiritual guy, you know, I like to look at, at scriptures. And, and if you look at like in the Bible, it talks about sorcery and the evil of sorcery. When you look that word up, it actually means pharmakia, which is where we get our word pharmacy. You know, it talks about how we're all deceived and lulled into a trance by sorcery, which means pharmacy. So I don't want anything that is perfect the way that nature created it being tampered with so we could put a dollar sign on it. I mean, you know, when in, big industries start getting into anything, like I, when I started smoking, you know, when I was 14 or 15, I knew it was bad. I knew it was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. and, but then, then they wanted to help us out and keep us from burning ourselves to death in our sleep. So they did the fire safe cigarettes. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, that's just me because now you have to puff on it like a lot more and you get more addicted. Then you're up to three packs a day. Right. So anytime, anytime big money, big pharma, Monsanto and these corporations get their hands in anything. It's always to distort it, to corrupt it, to change the nature of what it is to, you know, for the love of money. And like you said earlier, man, they don't care how long your lifespan is. They just want you for life, That's you right. know. And the weaker you are mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, the better, you know. Uh, 
And so, uh, you know, I'm I'm not a huge uh, like I couldn't tell you different breeds and different strains and what's the best. Some people are real enthusiastic about cannabis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's what I know: I know that I don't have any symptoms of PTSD, and I know I could sleep at night. And I know that's uh, that comes from farmers that are doing it out in the open. Mm-hmm. Uh, underneath the sunlight. I mean, you know, as above, so below, as within, so without. Uh, I, I think everything really gets its sustenance from the sun that's worth its salt. Definitely. You know, it's I mean, and the so, natural the natural way is the best way. I want to I want to point out something to the listeners, uh, and maybe you know this, maybe you don't. F. William Engdahl uh, actually has written several. Uh, you know, Tomei's about uh, the the growing policies and the and the experiments going on in Uruguay uh, with Monsanto is connected uh, George Soros and others to uh, the Monsanto growth process, uh, Bill Gates and others. Uh, Engdahl observes he wrote uh, the connection between the legalization of marijuana in Uruguay, Monsanto and George Soros. He wrote uh, Engdahl, uh, in tw- he said that in 2014, Uruguay became the first country to legalize the cultivation, sale and consumption of marijuana. Soros is a major player in Uruguay and was instrumental in getting the law passed. He sits on the board of the New York-based Drug Policy Alliance, the world's most influential organization for cannabis legalization. The DPA is active not only in the U.S., but in Uruguay and other Latin American countries. And he writes this. This is what he says. He says this quote. Studies show that Monsanto, without much fanfare, conducts research uh, projects on the active ingredient in marijuana, namely THC, in order to genetically manipulate the plant. David Watson of the Dutch company Hortifarm has since 1990 created the world's largest collection of cannabis seed varieties. In 1998, the British firm GW Pharmaceuticals signed an agreement with Hortifam that uh, Hortifarm, sorry, that gives GW Pharma the rights to use the Hortifarm cannabis for their research. In 2003, the German Bayer AG then signed an agreement with GW Pharmaceuticals for joint research on cannabis-based extract. In 2007, Bayer AG uh, agreed to an exchange of technology with Monsanto, which has discrete access to the work of the cannabis plant and to its genetic modification. In 2009, GW Pharmaceuticals announced that it had succeeded in genetically altering a cannabis plant and patented a new breed of of cannabis seeds. Uh, In March 2016... Last year, Monsanto approached Bayer AG with a joint venture proposal concerning its crop science unit. Monsanto's proposed merger with Bayer is expected to be completed by the second quarter of 2018, but only if it gets the green light from antitrust authorities. You see, they worry about a monopoly. So the prospective merger would create the world's largest supplier of seeds and chemicals. Environmentalists worry that the entire farming industry could soon be, uh, soon be looking at a sterile uh, at sterile crops are soaked in dangerous pesticides. Monsanto has sued hundreds of farmers for simply saving seeds from year to year, something they have done for millennia. Organic farmers are finding it increasingly difficult to prevent co- uh, contamination of their crops by Monsanto GMOs. So now what we're looking at here, uh, Daniel, uh, genetic engineering moving from foodstuffs to plant-based drugs to plant-based industrial fibers. And so you see why Monsanto's merger with Bayer is so important they, they certainly want to be able to corner the market on marijuana. And this is how we get the section, uh, we get the uh, Schedule 1 taken down, is they have rich pundits demanding it be taken down so they can start selling it. So there's a slippery slope. And removing that Schedule 1 moniker for marijuana, it would then give these corporate interests a chance to uh, corporatize and compartmentalize and maybe even add bad additives to marijuana. It sounds like a race to me, and we better get ahead of the curve. I think That's so. all I'm saying. I would agree. Uh, th- uh, there's there, we have a window of an opportunity right now, and, and, and I wouldn't be pushing Canada since as much as I am if I didn't believe that it was revolutionary in giving us a significant head start of these guys before they start doing this. I mean, genetically modified foods that we now we you know do we have it on the label? Do we not have it on the label? It seems like they want to genetically modify everything, and which in turn ultimately we know that's genetically modifying us. To what ends? Well, we could we could go down that rabbit hole. Uh, I got theories. I'm sure you got theories. I'm sure everybody out there's got theories, but they clearly want something done on a genetic level. And mm. and as as our culture is re uh, discovering the benefits of cannabis, they've got they're desperately scrambling to get in on that market. And we need to stop waiting on politicians and, and legislatures and, and go ahead and use some Ninth Amendment power. Some personal sovereignty, some personal nullification of federal and state laws, 
and do this ourselves. Like I said earlier, man, I, me and other people who are suffering, who need medical cannabis, we don't have time to wait for people who are trying to pad their pockets. Right. To, I was going to say there's another slippery slope to all this, too. If they genetically modify marijuana and they genetically modify the seeds, this keeps control on on local growers. And uh, uh, according to President uh, Mujica, Mujica in uh, Uruguay, it would be used to uh, curb any black market type of sales of, of marijuana. So this is, this is the excuse that they'll tell you. They'll say, well, if we have these genetically modified seeds and we have genetically modified marijuana crops, we'll be able to control the black market. So that would... That would be another reason to take it off Schedule 1 is because they wouldn't have the drug cartels to worry about anymore because you'd know you're getting, you're, you'd get, you'd be getting, they'd, they'd make illegal anything that would be uh, grown naturally or, or homegrown or, or with a group. And then they would Schedule 1 and say, okay, but we have corporate people like R.J. Reynolds and we have Monsanto and Bear that want to give you marijuana. And this is something that, I, I, it just worries me, scares me to death that this could happen because of what happened with the tobacco industry. We're going to be back more tonight with Daniel Lewis Crumpton here on Ground Zero. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. It's 420. And uh, we're, we're talking serious about cannabis tonight on Ground Zero. We'll be back. FM News 101 KXL. I'm getting older. Been with us tonight on Ground Zero Canisense and uh, he's telling us about this new revolutionary way that if you uh, are in a state that's not marijuana friendly, you can get your own. Got a question here from Matt who uh, just sent me a message here on Facebook. He said, what if you're in a state where medical marijuana is legal and no medical card is required? Can you still join Canisense? Yes, you can. Okay. So it, it helps what, in the apothecary sense? The apothecary sense. Uh, it also helps, uh, you know, with the legal defense thing if you if you want that. And uh, uh, with social media now, we all know people who are in states that are not cannabis friendly. So just by referring them, you get discounts on uh, on your own medicine. So it's beneficial there. I, th- the guys who are at the top of cannabis sense, I talk to them personally. I wouldn't be pushing it as much as I am if I hadn't kind of got a feel for where they're at. And essentially, the bottom line of cannabis sense is go out. Tell as many people and get them well. That's the entire mission statement, in my opinion, of Canisense is we are trying to get people better as fast as we can, as safe as we can uh, with quality non-GMO cannabis. That's and so, yeah, if, if you're in a state that it's already legal, actually, a lot of people that I have already sponsored into the program are in states where it's legal. And so they, they see the benefit after looking at the program and they're signing up, too. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's yeah. Go ahead and sign up, even if you're in a state that's that's uh, it's already legal. That's amazing. Let's go to Frank in Maine. Hi, Frank. You're on Ground Zero with uh, Daniel Lewis Crumpton. Go ahead. Hi, Clyde. Thank you for taking my call. First time caller, a long time listener. Thank you. And um, I um, suffer from a, a chronic neuropathy called CI. DP, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, and um, it's, a, it's a neuropathy in my legs and feet, and suffering from severe pain, and um, I was on Oxy for about two years, it didn't do anything, and I also uh, go for infusion treatments every two days, every other week, and um, I had spoken to my doctor about the uh, medical marijuana, because I live in Maine, and it is legal in the state. But he told me my disease doesn't qualify for that. And he told me I, I could try uh, the CBC oils. CBD oils, I, yeah. In a, in, right, in a smoke shop, he told me, you know, which I haven't tried yet, you know. But I, I just heard of this program, listening to your show tonight, great show. Well, thank and, you. Uh, you know, this seems real interesting to me because, like I said, I suffered in some severe pain all the time. And, and nothing really helps it, you know. Well, I would say uh, look into Canisense. Uh, this is this is a remarkable breakthrough. That's why I have Daniel on the program. Uh, uh, Daniel, tell him about how you can uh, get involved with Canisense. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I'm going to tell everybody out that the first thing you can do is go to downloadedcontent.com. 
click on the Canisense Total Wellness at the top. Um, right there, there a pop-up box will uh, come up on your screen after about seven seconds. You put your information in there and what you need, and I personally will get a hold of you and walk you through it. Uh, as far as your doctor in, in, in I think you said Maine, um, certain states who are legalizing for, for medicinal uses have very small lists of, of disorders or ailments that you can be approved with. Um, but we're going to bypass all that with Canisense and get you to a California doctor, make you a California patient who uh, they're very generous in in which disorders or treatments, uh, you know, they can they can recommend you cannabis for. So my suggestion to you, because here in Georgia, there's a very small scope of disorders that they're kind of looking at. PTSD is not one of them. And so that's an area that was concerning to me. So I said, I'm not going to wait for these guys in Atlanta. I'm just going to go ahead and talk to a doctor in California that I already know is going to approve me right. for uh, for PTSD and, and recovered alcoholism. And so I got it done just like that. And so, I got access to my medicine. So, Frank, uh, downloaded content, content.com. Go there. Click on the Can of Sense uh, link and you'll be able to get hooked up. And, and Daniel said he'll walk you through it. So there you go. Thank you, Frank. That's up. That sounds great. Just another quick thing. I'm out of time. I'm, I'm, I'm out of time, it. Frank. I'm sorry. I'm out of time. We'll be back. Daniel Lewis Crumpton is my guest tonight. Can of Sense. I have a. I have someone on my Facebook page. I wanted to talk about this with you, Daniel. Um, and he seems pretty angry about this. He says, I heard radio show today about CBD. I don't know if your show is misinformed, but you had mentioned CBD is illegal in most states. That's completely false. CBD made from hemp oil is legal in all 50 states. You can buy it at reputable online websites, too. It was scheduled two lamps, but it was scheduled two lamps a decade ago, and then it was taken off the illegal substances list long ago. I'm not talking about industri industrial hemp oil. I'm not talking about uh, CBD hemp oil. I'm talking about CBD oil with uh, cannabis oil uh, from uh, medical marijuana high in THC. Is that legal? I don't think it's legal. You're asking me? Yeah. I, I, I mean, I always thought that if you have, if you're getting CBD uh, oil, uh, uh, cannabis, cannabis oil uh, from uh, a, a marijuana plant high in THC, where the levels are just as high in the CBD category, that is illegal. I mean, I know that hemp oil has been very legal. In fact, I have some in my house. But I always thought that, you know, because whenever I, I mention CBD to people saying, hey, CBD benefits from, from cannabis uh, is amazing, they say, well, I, I, can't, I can't use it because it will show up in a urine test. And, uh, and, of course, the feds don't like you, you know, using stuff like that, but the states will make it very legal. But, heck, I know that hemp oil is legal and and so I, I you know I don't know if I'm confusing the two but I always thought that if you were if you were uh, using uh, CBD oil from cannabis that is uh, uh, you know that's comparative to the THC content of a plant then you are looking at, at, at an illegality so I don't know unless somebody can correct me on this uh, that's that's how I've always understood the law well, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I don't. I'm not really into CBD oils. I use the flowers myself, which does have THC in it. Yeah. And uh, like I said, uh, uh, I have to report to the state every month, and and your a year analysis is a part of the deal there. Uh, and so all I know is that in the state of Georgia, I spoke with my, my probation officer. I'm not ashamed to say that or anything. I mean, you're in Georgia, you're a political activist, you're going to be on probation. I'm sorry. Uh, and I just went over with my probation officer and said, look, this is the deal. Here's my card. Here's my recommendation. I'm going to use my Ninth Amendment to uh, go ahead and, and, and heal myself. And um, they didn't have a problem with it at all. And in fact, they encouraged me to help others. So uh, the legalities of it, as far as CBD oils versus a flower, I'm not quite sure. I don't use the CBD oils. I use the flower myself, uh, which does have THC in it. And I don't have any problems as a member of Canisense with it. Right. And, uh, you know, everything's new now. I mean, uh, and like I said, you know, this guy is telling me that, you know, you're, you're putting out false information. I did not clarify hemp as opposed to cannabis. And, and so, yeah, I know that hemp oil is available, but cannabis oil, uh, CBD oil, um, I, I do not know if the CBDs from cannabis with high content of THC are legal. Uh, if anybody wants to correct me on that, I don't want to put out false information. So anyway, we're going to go to the calls right now. Let's go to Dustin in Texas. Hi, Dustin, you're on Ground Zero. 
Hi, thanks, uh, Daniel and Clyde, for taking my call. First time caller, first time listener, actually. Um, I tuned in, and I'm really interested in canisense. Um, I have a relative that has multiple sclerosis, and we're in the state of Texas, which isn't friendly towards cannabis, and she's interested in trying something um, as far as cannabis goes to help multiple sclerosis. And I was curious, do you guys have members that are in Texas, and are these members having trouble with the law enforcement here? Yes, uh, I've signed up people personally that are in Texas, and like I said, since the foundation of Canisense, there hasn't been one single incident of anyone having any trouble with law enforcement whatsoever. But in the event that it, if it does ever happen, you know, they'll have the protections of a legal defense team, you know, at their beck and call. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to hear that. I'm, I'm, I appreciate the information tonight. Uh, you know, you, you, I think. Uh, I would think I would have heard it sooner, but... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, man. If you really appreciate it, spread it to everybody who can benefit and, and get well with it. So that's the best way to, to appreciate it. Downloadablecontent.com. Downloadablecontent.com. Uh, that's where you go. All right. Thank you. Let's go now to uh, Brandon in Texas. Hi, Brandon. You're on Ground Zero. Hello again, Clyde. Hello. Hey, uh, I just wanted to throw a couple of points. Uh, I, you know, you talk talking about Facebook on this guy about CBD. Um, I do go to a vape shop. I vape. I've been vaping for a few years, quit smoking for 12 years after, you know, I've been vaping since. Um, I do get a hemp oil from the vape shop that is 100% CBD, but there's zero THC on it, and I've been told that that is illegal. And that, you know, well, I, hemp oil is illegal? I know, um, the hemp oil is illegal, hemp oil? Uh, no. no, no, the one with, if it has THC in it, that it's not, you cannot purchase that. Okay. Because that's what I was but, thinking um, is they, they find, yeah. you know, little, you know, parts of THC in your CBD when you're using uh, cannabis oil. And, um, and, and so that's what I was, that's what I meant. Okay. I didn't mean that, you know, they're going to bar yeah. you from getting hemp oil. Yeah. And, and he's, you know, and, and, you know, FDA has really been cracking down on uh, the vape store that I go to that has, you know, like you're talking about the CBD rub and stuff like that you put on your joints and they have that there and a couple of different other ones. But, um, I, I, you know, I was there one time and they say the FDA is cracking down on, they try to catch them selling the THC, you know, they do like the secret, uh, caller and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm a big marijuana activist. My great grandparents are actually featured in high, high times. They were busted in uh, Missouri. It's like one of the biggest, uh, marijuana busts in the history of that state or something like that back then. And, uh, I also have a cookbook. It's by, uh, ST Warner. It's a chef book and it teaches you how to make that butter and make your own uh, liquor and stuff using that, you know, in like Colorado, that would be really helpful and right. all that if people were interested in, you know, making their own because you can also do that. Yeah, in legal, in legal states like the state I'm in, it's amazing to uh, see just what can be made. Uh, caramel chews, chocolate, yes, uh, even ice cream. Uh, they have they have uh, marijuana ice cream. So, I mean, uh, yes, you, you can, uh, and, it's, and, it, and it tastes hey. like regular ice cream. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. Huh. Clyde, you would love this. Canisense also offers cannabis coffee. Yeah, see, I've heard about that too. And uh, yeah, I've heard of cannabis coffee. Uh, that's that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, also, um, Trump, you know, he he also said like when he was running that he would support state law as well. So I mean, if it came down to states, you know, it would. I don't think we'd have to really worry about federal laws under Trump. Or anything. Oh, the, well, the federal can push it. Believe me. I mean, if you work. Like, for example, smoking uh, marijuana in your house, if it's a federally, if you're living in federal housing, they clamp down on you about that. Mm, uh, smoking sure. marijuana yeah, sure. outside in your home or outside on the patio, if somebody wanted to uh, go after you for the smell, they could call the police. The mm, police mm -hmm. could push it at yeah, a federal they level. They do that. Yeah, they have that sniffer and everything, too. Right. They sniff it out. So you have to be careful, uh, you know, and be very discreet. I mean, even though... You know, marijuana is legal in Oregon. People still are very discreet about using marijuana. I mean, the other day I was walking down the street and I smelled somebody smoking a joint. But, you know, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't uh, bet a police officer would come by and bust them. But I certainly would think the police officer would say something to the effect that, you know, you know that, uh, you know, if, if a federal officer is around here, you'd probably be busted. And that's the thing. It's just like it, it's this untenable type of confusion between the federal law and the state law. And that's why, you know, when I say that. 
uh, CBD oil may be illegal. Um, I just hear from a lot of people who don't want to use it because they're afraid they're going to uh, get you know knocked yeah, around by the feds. I know a lot of bus drivers that are in a lot of pain, and they say, well, we can't well, do it because where I work, they'll take a urine test, and, and I'll be out of a job. Man, no, not everybody reacts to it the same. I've heard stories of people, you know, going off the rails, but also, you know, that now that it's legal in some states, people are getting to toy with it and make strains with high, high THC, and, you know, people can't uh, handle it, I suppose. But I also want to comment on Daniel saying that he really likes your intros, and I'm glad you played that Donald Trump because if I was on last, I would have been telling you to play it because I think you would really like it also, you know. <laughs> we had a good giggle at the same time when he said that. Well, Brandon, thank you for calling the program. Really appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Let's go to Aaron in South Dakota. Hi, Aaron. You're on with Daniel Lewis Crumpton. Go ahead. Aaron. Hey. Hi, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Clyde. Love the show. How you doing tonight? Doing great, man. Say hi to Daniel. Hey, Daniel. How you doing, man? Better than it was yesterday, bro. <laughs> All right. But anyway, so how, why I was calling is um, we have the most messed up uh, laws for pot in South Dakota. Um, you will literally go to jail for possession of marijuana and not have anything on you. They have what's known as ingestion law here, where you will go down and they will strap you down, make you take a UA, and then charge you with possession, even though you don't have anything. If you've ingested it. Yeah. It's oh like, say you smoked a joint and it's all gone and a cop smelled it. He will take you down to the police station and make you take a UA, and they can charge you with ingestion. And you will go to jail for your first offense. That's just, it's just bizarre. That's why, you know, programs like Canisense is around. That way you can avoid, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, and, and Daniel yeah. said, yeah, a legal team. You have a legal team behind you, too. So you can, you can push the issue uh, if you're in South Dakota and you need it, and they, and they decide they want to you know, press charges against you, that they'll, they'll show that, you know, you have a medical marijuana card and that you're being treated by a doctor. So maybe something to look into, Aaron. Yeah, but the whole thing is we don't have a medical law here. They do in California. And, yeah, I, I guess I didn't. That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. Article 4, Article 4 of the Constitution is going to put you under the protection of the Compassionate Use Act in California, regardless of the state that you're in. That's how it works. Really? Aaron. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need to look into that. Yeah, you need to look into right. it. Yeah, you look into it. Where, where's the website again, Daniel? Where, where do they go to get this information and, and check it out? It's downloadedcontent.com, kind of like my initials, DLC. Uh -huh. See, yeah. there's yeah. a little connection there. Yeah, and <laughs> click on the click on the can of sense total wellness uh, tab at the top. And uh, all the information is there, and you know, you put your information in, man, and let me know what you need, and I will get a hold of you. Daniel Lewis Crumpton, right here on Ground Zero. It's 420 day, and you're getting information you never thought you'd get, and we're giving it to you tonight. A little serious about this stuff. It's not always fun and games. A lot of people are in need of it. They need it for their health, and we're giving you some opportunities to try and find it. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. It's all legal, too. We'll be back. With Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101. Daniel Lewis Crumpton with us tonight on Ground Zero. Can of Sense going to Max in Oregon. Hi, Max. You're on Ground Zero. Hey, Clyde. How's it going? Going well, man. Been a long time since we talked, but it uh, sounded like you had some questions I could help you out with. Yes, please help me. I want to know about... Uh, now, I know that hemp oil... In a lot of cases, is legal, C uh, and CBD and hemp oil is legal. But if you're dealing with uh, ca cannabis oil with uh, any traces of uh, THC in it, you're dealing with illegal substance. Am I correct? You are correct. Okay. Um, I, I've been, uh, let's just put it this way, uh, July 4, 2000, I woke up blind one day. I found out I had multiple sclerosis then. The only way I could get my sight back was from ingesting cannabis oil after a bunch of failed IV treatments. They almost killed me. So over the years, I've learned, and about, oh, about eight years after I got my sight back, um, one day I got ran over by a school bus, oh and I wound up with horrible, I mean, I, I was trapped by my thigh on a, from an unmanned school bus, 
for 43 minutes before the paramedic or, or the fire department found the driver and got the keys. So I've been through some hell, but what I can tell you, I think you need to know and the listeners need to know is I don't care if you've got can of scent. I don't care if you've got the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program or any one of these states. If you're on a narcotic pain medication regimen of any kind, they do not check for CBD. They, they do not scan whether it's uh, hemp or it's cannabis derived, um, but they do check for THC. And I don't care anything you've got. Right now, it's not federally illegal to take cannabis and a narcotic painkiller, but there's only one doctor that I know in this state and in other states that actually practices apothecary with pain management. So what I'm scared of is I don't want a lot of listeners to go out and do this and be on pain medication or some type of urinalysis like a UDS because they're going to get busted and their life's going to turn upside down. I got to tell you this, Max, and this is something I want to uh, let everybody know about. You know, yep. I am on, uh, I, I have a, a pain, a pain agreement with my doctor. Right. And that pain agreement is very strict. And the right. situation is, is that whenever I start talking about marijuana, CBD, or anything else on my program, um, you know, I got a warning, not from my doctor, but from somebody else saying that if at any time uh, they test me and they do a pill count or a testing on any of my opioids I may be taking, if at any time they find THC in my system, they'll cut me off from my narcotics. And I will not be able to get them ever again. Yeah, you will be blacklisted for at least yeah. two years. Yeah, I, and that's the yep. thing is that it's it's a difficult thing uh, because sometimes, you know, I'd like to I'd like to say I mean I've used CBD oil before, I've used CBD butter before to get rid of pain, but that was because I was trying it just to see if it worked. I mean I, I'm not I'm not a habitual user of it, but the thing is is that right. whenever they listen, I mean I know they listen to my show because I'm you know I'm number one in Portland, Oregon. So every, I mean one in three people are listening to me right now. But, you know, when, when anybody who is in my doctor's office heard me talking about marijuana, heard me talking about anything like that, they told me, it says, you better watch it because if we find any in your system, we'll, we'll, we'll take away all your opioid privileges. And I said, well, I'm on a pain agreement. I'm not using that. And so, yeah, they haven't, I haven't tested positive for any of it because I haven't used it in a long time. But still, uh, you know, things are wonky. And that's the whole point is that if Daniel, you know, Daniel, you have this program you know, I hope it does take the wonkiness out of all this. As I said, the laws now are untenable. They're, they're, they're not clear on a lot of things. And so, you know, you can say that CBD on one hand, if it's, if it's hemp, CBD is legal, but then there's the THC content we have to worry about with the CBD and that makes it illegal. You're running into a lot of uh, murky areas here, Daniel. Yeah, what I, I like to do is, you know, I like to go by the Constitution, which is the supreme law of the land. And as far as I know, you know, there's three Supreme Court cases, Marbury versus Madison, Murdoch versus Pennsylvania, and Shuttlesworth versus Alabama. Those have never been overturned, which essentially says that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And no, no lesser legislature, like a state or, or whatnot, can come along and write any law that contradicts the supreme law of the land. Because if they do, um, it's a nullity, it's null and void of law, and the citizen can and enact in their right without impunity. That's just kind of what I go by. I don't really pay too awful much attention to state law anyway because of those Supreme Court rulings. Um, the Constitution is still the supreme law of the land. That's just me. That's the, the avenue that I personally take. Like I said, I'm a Ninth Amendment type of guy. And uh, so I don't I don't really wait for, for government to give me permission to do what I already have a right to do. Um, I just uh, assume that uh, those rights are given to me by a creator and I walk in that. So, but I do encourage everybody to walk their own path. You know, if, if um, being compliant with state laws and, and uh, doctors, I, I don't, I don't go to doctors, so I don't know what a, what a pain agreement is. Uh, it sounds kind of morbid to me. I don't know what it's, that is. Well, <laughs> it's, I'll tell you what it is. It's the DEA turning your doctor into a spy. That's exactly what wow. it is.
Max, thank you for the call. That's exactly what it is. It's to turn your doctor and your pharmacist into a spy and making sure that you're not taking too many pills or selling them, uh, which a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of uh, senior citizens, they sell their pain pills because they can't afford to eat, nor nor can they afford their, their bills. So sometimes they get a lot of pain pills and they sell them, and that's another problem for uh, uh, you know opioid use. We have the opioid epidemic. We have people selling opioids on, uh, you know, they're selling them personally to other people, and this is why we have these pain agreements. This is why we have doctors and the pharmacists spying on you. It's, it's, it's the surveillance state. We'll be back. With all of my heart, it is a contributing factor to our juvenile system today. Lewis, you're listening to Ground Zero. We've come a long way since the days of reefer madness. Here we are with Daniel Lewis Crumpton talking about Canisense. Amazing program to uh, help people who live in states that aren't marijuana friendly get the treatments they need in medical marijuana. Today is 420, the unofficial or official day of those who celebrate the use of cannabis. And uh, we're going to go to Carl in Nevada. Hi, Carl. You're on Ground Zero with uh, Daniel Lewis Crumpton. Go ahead. Yeah, Clay. I've talked to you before. I'm a clinical psychologist. Um, I has to do with uh, marijuana and so forth. I am very much in favor of medical marijuana. Unfortunately, I'm not in favor of just playing recreational, walking to a store and buying marijuana. There's enough people driving drunk from alcohol, from having problems like that, taking other pills, and then taking marijuana. Uh, I feel that drugs should not be penalized just as a drug itself, but the reaction that comes from you taking it, your actions should be penalized. If you take marijuana or a drug and kill somebody in a car, uh, hit them or something. You're responsible for that. Not sure, the drug, that's intoxication, sure. and if you're if you're driving while intoxicated, that should be against law. Being a clinical psychologist, Carl, wouldn't you say that this country would be better off if we took the criminality out of uh, drug abuse and make it a health issue? Yeah, definitely so. But like I'm saying, you're still responsible for your own actions. And we're not denying that. I'm just saying that the problem yeah. I'm having is that uh, just uh, being your own home high. Or, or using it for medicinal purposes and having a big misunderstanding with the feds, you, you turn around and we're busting people, throwing them in jail for having a plant in a pipe that they're smoking, and it's not causing anyone any trouble. No one's getting harmed. No one's getting hurt. No one dies or overdoses from using this material. And yet, you know, we have such strict, horrible laws making it a Schedule 1. I mean, that, that's, that's insane. I mean, look, if you're drinking alcohol and you're driving, you're dangerous. If you're, if you're smoking pot and you're driving, you're dangerous. But if you're just smoking pot in your own home and you're utilizing uh, your right to, uh, you know, imbibe or, or use whatever you need to use, uh, if there is a dependence or a psychological dependence, that's where you come in. It's a health issue, not a, not a, uh, a law and order issue. And I think that, you know, the war on drugs has, has definitely, uh, it's completely uh, lost. Uh, medical marijuana is winning. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I've been seeing every once in a while shows on uh, the cable channels where we're watching, you know, police officers doing drug busts. And anymore, I see that and I laugh because I'm thinking, oh, how big are you? You pulled a p- bunch of plants out of the backyard of somebody's house and now you're going to put them in jail. You know, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I think that if it's a if it's a thing that works for your health, if it's something that's helping people, why is it they're doing this to people? Yeah, well, obviously also it's costing the country a huge fortune with uh, uh, incarcerating a lot of these people. It's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous in some form, forms, but... Uh, like I said before, I, I'm, uh, it comes to marijuana is one thing, but there are higher drugs and opioids and so forth that I'm kind of against because they do brain damage, sort of cell killing certain brain cells, mm-hmm. uh, much quicker than uh, <laughs> marijuana can do. Uh, well, actually, you know, uh, and, and, and you gotta be very uh, when I became careful. a cannabis activist, it was after I lost my father to over the counter pain relievers. Uh, he developed an ulcer, and, and, and that's how I lost my father. Uh, he didn't believe in pain, you know, prescription painkillers either, but he would have been put in jail into a privately owned prison for, for partaking of a plan that nobody's ever died of. That's what I find ridiculous about state laws. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think Carl agrees that, you know, because I mean, I mean, being a clinical psychologist, you can you could probably attest to the fact that uh, opioids also depress the system. And many people fall into deep depressions while, while being on opioids. Am I correct, Carl? Well, yes, but most people who commit suicide are extremely depressed. Yeah. They're not over you enjoy. They're not over joy. They're in extreme state of depression. Yeah, exactly. And that's very dangerous at that point because they sometimes act on their thoughts. Uh, uh, suicide. Ninety percent of people who commit suicide are in extreme depression. Right. And, and, and you know, if we're alleviating that depression in some way with, uh, you know, with something like marijuana, I don't see any problem with it. And that's the thing. Is oh, that, no, no. Yeah, I, no, I definitely. You just need to be responsible. I mean, I wouldn't be going out if I was on, you know, Ambien and uh, Xanax and a number of other pills that depress my system. You don't think I'll be behind the wheel of a car. And I, and I certainly well, wouldn't no. be on the air either. So, I mean, that's, yeah. that's, well, that's I responsibility. Had a yeah, I had a sister in law who was bipolar and she took Ambien. A few other things, and she committed suicide anyway. Wow! So uh, you got to jump off the sixth story of a hotel in Las Vegas here. Anyway, <sighs> but uh, that uh, you know. So what I'm saying is, the only other thing I have against that too is a lot of doctors. They've got to be careful. There are a lot of uh, uh, crooked doctors. I've seen places where people lined up around the block to get marijuana prescriptions for health use, and the doctor doesn't even look at them. They just write a prescription. They pay them and they write a prescription. you got to be very careful of those type of operations, too. Well, we have the They're defense. The, according to Daniel, they have a defense team that, that protects them. So apparently they have good lawyers that basically back the system up. So if people are really in need of this type of treatment, they can have it. It's made available to them. And I think, you know, as, as long as it's legal uh, and there, there are no problems with that, I, I, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, it's just one more way that people who are in need of, of this treatment get the treatment. And, you know, I have nothing against them. I, mean, I learned very uh, easily that uh, that marijuana uh, works, especially after I was uh, I had my kidney cancer, because when they cut into me, uh, my you know, I, I didn't want to eat because I had so much pain and scarring uh, in the area. I, I didn't get uh, the, the little cut where they go in and blow me open. No, they had to, they cut clear across. And so I was yeah, there. Well, yeah, I, I had I had kidney I had kidney cancer also. Oh wow! And I had a so called clear cell carcinoma, and my right kidney I had to have a partial nephrectomy. So but right. luckily the surgeon I used used what's called robotic surgery, which they put three little holes in the front. Yeah. The camera goes in one hole, the knife goes in another, yeah. and he sits at a console away from the table instead of cutting you all open. See, they used uh, Da Vinci. They yeah. used Da Vinci arms on me too, but they had to cut me completely open. Yeah. So, I oh, mean, I, I've had, I've had, uh, what is it? I've had three partial nephrectomies, uh, uh, one on one on one kidney and two on another kidney. So oh. that's that's my story. Well, so what, how's your kidney function? How's they're they're kidney fine. Function? In fact, my doctor said they look plump and good enough to eat. I thought it was kind of gross, but he said that's how good they look. So. Well, well, you better get some onions with it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Is your doctor Dr. Uh, Lecter? Uh, <laughs> uh, Hello, Clyde. <laughs> I'll, leave you, I'll leave you with one last thought. Okay, Carl. Uh, President, President Trump... Uh, was uh, in Miami, and he was going to take a yacht. He tried to go down to the Bahamas, but he was on it for a while. When he got up past, all of a sudden he looked out the window, and he saw the Statue of Liberty. And he said, better tell the captain this ship is going in the wrong direction. So <laughs> I thought, <laughs> don't you like that? Yeah. Very good, Carl. <laughs> Talk okay. to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Let's go to Eric in Oklahoma. Hi, Eric. You're on with Daniel okay. Lewis Crumpton. Go ahead. All the beans and a nice chance. That's yeah, exactly really right. Good. My kidneys are uh, yummy. Yes, uh, my, I suffer from high blood pressure, and my friend, is Dr. Bogdoma, he was going to go, and he lives in Arkansas, he was going to get his uh, medical marijuana card, but he found out that as soon as you do that, it strips you of your right to keep and bear arms nationally. That's, a, that's uh, something, yeah, uh, that, that's something that's very interesting, Eric, you're right. Uh Here's the deal about Second Amendment, Daniel, and I don't know if you know about this, but uh, they, uh, it's either or, man. If you, if you are, uh, if you have a medical marijuana card, they're, they're trying to keep you from having a gun. 
Yeah, the state of Georgia a few years ago, they they uh, they really stuck it to the veterans. Uh, anybody with post traumatic stress disorder, where they've tried to make it difficult to you know bear arms. Um, you know, that's that's a shoddy deal. But but at the end of the day, like I said, this is me personally. I'm not telling you guys what to do. You know, but I'm a Ninth Amendment guy. Um, I don't acknowledge anything that the state comes along and says that is uh, contradictory to my rights, which are inerrant by my creator and uh, enumerated in the Constitution. So uh, I have a medical uh, cannabis card. I, you know, I have post-traumatic stress disorder, and I got guns. Wow. So you still have a gun. And, 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 yeah, go ahead. Have you had yeah, any I, uh, associations with the, or any uh, run into law enforcement while carrying a weapon at any point in time? Say that again, Eric. You're not talking directly in your phone. Yeah, have you had any runners with law enforcement with your card and possibly having a weapon at you on your side at the same time? Have you ever run into the? Have, uh, any, have you run into the law, any, Daniel? Have you gotten any static, any static or problem for that? Having a card and a weapon? Um, no, I haven't. I, I mean, I've. I've had run-in, several run-ins with, with law enforcement or peace officers or, or whatever you want to call them. Um, but, no, I haven't had any problems. Okay. Eric, thank you for your call. Thank you so much. Let's go now to John in Wisconsin. Hi, John. You're on Ground Zero. Um, in Wisconsin, we just passed a law that was signed a week or so ago, I believe, by the governor that is going to allow for the uh, – cannabis oil they've been trying to get medical marijuana passed but this i think was a compromise that they took into uh the uh assembly and whatnot here and did get that done so here the oil is now legal. good good that's some that that is a very valuable uh medicinal product is the oil uh, uh and uh I, I i'm glad to hear that they they made it legal where you are Unfortunately, it'll still affect people like me for my jobs. I haven't been able to use any kind of cameras for about 30 years because at most jobs that I've had, I have to take drug screenings and have federal licensing for things. So, you know, I still couldn't use it if, if I did need it, unfortunately. Yeah, there, need, there needs to be, you know, provisions being made, you know, for things like, you know, oil See, that's the thing. We just need to make it legal across the board. And if it, if it becomes a problem, it needs to be a health issue, not a law issue. And that's that's the whole point. It's that we need to grow up. We need to realize that you know marijuana laws uh, were basically uh, laws that were put put into into play because of uh, propaganda and and lies. And and now people still stick with this. And people are so hard against marijuana, they're willing to make up or even believe nonsense. And that's what thing. That's what really bothers me about it. John, thank you for your call. I really appreciate you calling in tonight. Take care. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. Daniel Lewis Crumpton with us tonight on Ground Zero. More of your calls and more information on Canisense coming up. Don't go away. 888-673-3700. We'll be back. FM. Ground zero. Go ahead. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Um, our laws are different up here. Everything's federally regulated. Uh huh. So mar- medical marijuana laws are just straight across the country. It's not provincially or whatever. So I'm just recently getting my medical marijuana license, and with the CBDs, it does have THC. So you do have to have a license up here for that. And. Uh, here, like I did a self-referral to go see a doctor. I didn't have to see my regular doctor to go get a medical marijuana license. And um, we have about 33 vendors across the country to choose from where we go to buy our marijuana and our oils and such. And it's all regulated by the federal government. And about a year from now, it's going to be legalized anyway. And, uh, yeah, so, and, and, uh, the CBD oils have not much THC in them, a little bit, but not much. And the, the beauty of the CBD oil is you can put a few drops under your tongue, you can drop it in your coffee or your tea, and 
it's more of a body stone. Yeah, it, well, it's not psychoactive. That's the thing is that CBD is not a psychoactive property no. of uh, of the of the cannabis, and so no. you, you get a nice. Uh, you feel good. It's a. It's. Yeah. It's not a brain high. It's a feeling good high. Your body feels comfortable yeah. and without pain, and it's amazing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's. There's just a small amount of THC in it. You know. You won't get a head high no. really no. from it. It'll be your body that feels good. Yeah, and you, you and can even drive lasts. a car under under CBD. You can drive a car. Sure. You can operate machinery. It's just. It's not psychoactive. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. impair you. Yeah. Yeah, and from what I was told, it takes about an hour to work, and then it'll last you about eight hours. Now, that's a wonderful thing when you've got nerve damage like I have. Topical is immediate, Pam. I've used it topically, and it's immediate. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I've had it. I've had, well, when I had my... Um when I had uh, my um, my what they call the knots in my back because you know I I type all day and I'm up and around and then I do the show and I'm sitting down and everything I get these knots in my back and when I get them the only thing that'll you know that will work right I mean sure I can use soma that works but it takes forever but it, sometimes if I could just find some tea, some CBD it takes mm -hmm. it off immediately the pain goes away and they relax the knots relax and so they. Really good. Anyway, Pam, I'm out of time. I thank you for calling the program. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Take care. Bye -bye. Daniel, one more time, you got to tell us about Canisense. We only have a few minutes. Give your website and, and tell us the lowdown again for people who want to take part in it. Yeah, no worries, man. And I hope to sponsor you guys in so you can start getting people help, too, on a daily basis. Uh, if you guys want information, go to DownloadedContent.com and click on the Canisense Total Wellness page. And uh, that's my personal website. It's not Canisense's website. Theirs is Canisense.com. Um, so if you go there to sign up, actually, just make sure you tell them, you know, who it is that sponsors you in. But on DownloadedContent.com, there's a tutorial video that will actually walk you through the, the process of setting up a doctor's appointment to upload your recommendation to order your medicine from the apothecary um, and if you have if you have any questions or, or you need help or, or you you know there's anything that you want me to, to kind of clarify for you uh, put your email and your number and your name in, in the pop-up box and it'll go into you know my CRM thingy and uh, I'll get a hold of you as soon as I possibly can but yeah Canisense is great, man. It's basically bypassing, you know, politicians sitting on their hands with a le an existing legal framework to get people access to their medical cannabis right now, um, right through the mail. And I, you'd be surprised, Claude, that the people who are actually giving me the most static about this entire program is is cannabis activists, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. who don't want to give the fight up. It's like, no, this can't be, it can't be over. And I'm like, yeah, it's pretty much over. So, well, I mean, this let's, <laughs> let's just keep in mind that medical marijuana is winning. Recreational still have a lot of hurdles. But as I said before, Donald Trump seemed to be very, very, uh, you know, uh, friendly to the medical side. Sean Spicer said it's friendly. The only thing, though, is we have to now get beyond the attorney general. And from there, I don't know where we're going to go. But, Daniel, thank you for being on the program tonight. Hey, thanks for having me, Claude. I appreciate it. You have a good night. Take care. Downloadedcontent.com. It's downloadedcontent.com. And uh, we'll be back with more of your calls and, and uh, more on this issue at 420 here on Ground Zero. We'll be back.